We're live. Boom. Speaking of boom, 12 hours of boom. Yes. July 7th, we're doing the boom. 10 to 10 this time. I like 10 the 10 a.m., 10 p.m. That's right. 10 to 10. 10 to 10. Mm -mm -mm. You guys may notice here shortly, I uh, fashioning whiskey dick. Yeah, shortly. Be like Bill. Probably notice right away. New motto, what would Bill do? <laughs> <laughs> Lana's with us. It's been forever. Yes. Been, we, well, it's been, we, had, uh, we had Vin on. We did Well, we did the uh, Drams for Fams event. I think we took the next week off. We had Vin on, uh, No Nonsense Whiskey, and a couple weeks off, and here we are. So you know what was pointed out to me by several people is we never did a Make America Pete It Again championship recap. Mm, I think we were Pete spent. We were spent, weren't we? Yeah, we were. We were a little spent ourselves at that point in time. Uh, Hillbilly, he's joining us for the first time. He says, did Scott lose a bet? I did <laughs> not. I've, I've had this. I fashioned this before, but it's been a few years. I think 2011 was the last time I shaved the head. Well, I think you said when when you let the hair come back that time, there was less that came back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jason Jason Coates points out it's hot as f here in Kansas. Hair just gets in the way. It does. So, mm. a lot of people tuning in. Scotch Four Dummies is here, and Drew both. Mm. Travis Faircloth, Daniel Brown, Sharper Forty Two Twenty One, Sean Hardesty, Shimon, Howdy Shimon. Um, yeah, you're getting a lot of woes and oh my gods and yeah, John Post, Whiskey Sneerson. Yeah, need some sun, says shenanigans. Pawnee de Panda. I don't know See? if I pronounced that right. Eric Scott. Wade is here. Of course, he's bald too. Um, join the, the Bill and the Eric Club. Scott just knew I love tan lines. Yeah. That's my well, I actually shaved it yesterday morning, and I thought, well, I'll get some sun on it Saturday, Sunday, and Monday before I go back to work on Tuesday. Well, I got some sun yesterday, but today it's been kind of cloudy and rainy and misty all day, so no sun today. It's been awesome. Tom R. is with us, Richard Blancas, Thomas Buck, George Kaplan. The Burton sniper. Shenanigans. The sniper is bringing some Pete home from Kilhoman and Lafroig. He's been over in Isla. Santa Cruzin is here, Everwind, Bobby Parnell. We got a whole slew of people, Barto. Slew. You know who's with us, too, I think, for the first time is Sean Nemo. Nemo. Sean Nemo uh, has been supporting us now for a short spell. Good he's got a, he's laid up at home with a broken foot. Yes. He, but, uh, he had a mean boss. <laughs> before his boss ran over his foot. Right. Just ran him over. It was apparently senseless. <laughs> uh, Sean, though, pointed out right before we went live, he was commenting. He says, hey, fellas, for the 12 hours of boom, he's hosting a watching party at his house with about 12 whiskey friends, and they're in it for the whole thing, he says, which is going to be 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. this year. Boom. I'm, while, while he's watching with his buddies, we'll be doing some habeas gravis of some whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> We, and that was uh, – actually, Bart, you were pretty tired because I got with you earlier today. I said, hey, we need to do a live. You said not tonight. Been at a conference all weekend, wiped out, tired. And I said, dude, we got to do one real quick at least. Yep. We need yep. to talk about the 12 hours of boom. We need right. to talk about um, an event in October that's going to be coming up that we're finalizing some details on. And we got some whiskey talk. I like the way you're talking right there. Yeah, I actually didn't think I was going to get – the quote unquote kitchen pass. I'd been uh, busy all weekend. And uh, then when I got home today, I took a nap. And uh, and my uh, Puerto Rican wife was out gardening and, and I could tell it, it was, it seemed slightly frowned upon. I think she was just tired, which yeah. actually worked to my advantage. She was like, no, do the show. I'm wiped. I'm going no. to bed. I'll be in bed by then. I was like, perfect. And then oh, I started was Douglas DeWint is joining us from Salina. That's about 90 miles north of us. Howdy, Douglas. Hmm. First time I've seen him tune in. Actually, at the conference I was at, there were some guys that uh, are fans of the show. From Hutchinson, was it? 
Um, yes, I believe so. Well, there was one from Hutch, and the other one, I, I'm not sure where he was from, actually, because I thought he was Hutch, too, and it turned out he said, nope. And he was converting people over the weekend, which was cool. Good. Mead I, Mule. Mead Mule and his cousin, the Malted Man Cave, are tuning in. Richie Z is here. Moose, 60, Moose 76. Travis Faircloth, good to have us back on Sunday night. He says, Gene Parker's here. Harry Wally. You know what else I tried? A, a Bushmills, what is it? Black label? Black something. Just, yeah, just the Bushmills black. Black but Bush, it, they call it. Black what? Black Bush. Yeah, Black Bush. That was it. It was Sherry Cast. Yeah, this uh, this one fellow was like, man, all they got up there in that hospitality room is bourbon. I go, yeah, but they got some pretty good bourbon. They got some Makers. They got some Bob Creek. They got some average stuff. They had a little bit of my favorite winter wheat. <laughs> winter rye. Winter rye. Winter rye. Yeah. You even messed that up. I know. I messed, I got up, messed up. Well, I was looking at your head. Let's do a, hey, speaking of bourbon real quick. So we've done, we've done the Weller Antique 107. We've done Weller 12. We've done the Van Winkle 12, Lot B, which everybody compares all those. We've never done the Weller Special Reserve. Hmm. They're, they're entry bourbon. So yesterday I picked up a bottle. It's $18. And you can see last night, you see the hit I put on that bottle. Holy moly, is that good? That's pretty damn decent for 18 bucks. Wow. No surprise. Especially when you got the Kirkland 18 behind you and that down more. Yeah. You know what we need to do, Bart? We had a list is uh, give away our Dragon Crescent tumblers. The uh, Dragon Mama comment. Dragon Mother. Dragon, dragon mother. mother. Yeah. Some people like Dragon Mama because it sounds a little bit like you're dragging her around. You want to do that right now so we don't do forget? It. Get it out of the way. Run a little yeah. Siri. We should. Yep. Well, let me find out what we got for a list. You're pretty good on the list. I bet you we got, what, 62? No, it was more than that. Ooh, 87. Though. One through 87. Nice. You want me to do it? Yeah, yeah. Run your uh, run your number. All right. Hey, Siri, give me a random number between 1 and 87. That would be 38. Ooh, good, good medium number right in there. 38. And to show you guys the screen... Oh, see, this one, someone's like, I was 39. Dang. Yep. Tim Dietrich. Woo. Tim Dietrich is number 38. And I see right above him. Humphreys. I can't read it. I can't read it backwards. Who's above James, him and below him? James Humphreys and Expel 23 were bracketing him. Let me see. We'll lock Bird it on. Dog. There. Bird Dog was down at 44. Favorite number, Bird Dog. That's my favorite number. <laughs> All right, Tim Dietrich, we'll send you a message on uh, YouTube or uh, send us an email at scotchtestdummies at gmail.com. And I don't know the way you do it, but as I record the names that come in, I literally just make a list and record the number. That's how you do it too, right? Yep. Yep. So those look Dragon. good. Cool. Yep. Crescent tumblers, 12 and a half ounces. Those got like a, a 1964 feel to them. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Matter of fact, it is like a 60s, 70s type disco era. Yep. Yep. Those kind of those got a good feel. I like all the uh the whiskey accoutrements that are coming out. Mm -mm -mm. Was, is, no. Am I looking wrong? Whiskey Dick is saying that Tim was number 39. Was I looking wrong? Well, oh, James Humphreys. Did I call it wrong? What was the number? Oh, shoot. I don't know. Now I'm confused. Was it 38 or 30? James Humphreys was 38. Tim Dietrich was 39. What was the number? I mean, I'm going to have to replay it. Yeah, I got so excited there. I just went with whatever name you were saying. Uh, everybody, okay, so everybody's saying it was number 38. So, well, talk about messing something up. Wow. James, James Humphreys is number 38. If I'd done that, you would have mocked me. I know. I would have. feel like... What dummy you did? She says the number and you just say it. 39 got it. 39. <laughs> James Humphreys just took just snatched it right out of the hams of Tim Dietrich. Wow. Yeah. He's like, well, I wasn't bracketing. I want it. <laughs> Tim Dietrich was like jumping up and down somewhere, like, woo hoo, woo, woo. For all those tuning in, I did not lose a bet. 
it's been a few years since I shaved my head and went bald. And I just been looking at my hair lately. It's been hot. It's been humid. And I was like, it's time to shave her down again. Now you got a better skull. My skull is misshapen. <laughs> when I was in the army and they took it down, I was like, damn, this will never be a good look for me. <laughs> we had a couple bald guys in my basic training unit. I was like, damn, you guys should just stay like that. How, what the hell? You got like a good, well-shaped skull. Mine's all knobby and turns out some, some Doberman bit me when I was like one years old. So I had this weird scar thing that no one had ever seen before. Well, Hill, Hillbilly points out on my air that we're not called the Scotch Test Geniuses. So, yeah, boom. Yeah. I was by design right there. <laughs> we set the bar low. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Scott came up with, he's got, I think I got a name for us. And I'm like, the brilliant duo. And he's like, mm -mm, Scotch test dummies. I'm like, brilliant. We can rise to that. Yeah, beer in a bottle. Brilliant. Man, we can hit that mark. <laughs> uh, Triple Cat points out that he wants to do this, but his wife would kill him. Uh, Swami says, I'm stealing his look. Shimon says that your head is shaped like an alien. <laughs> yeah. Yours or mine? Yours. Yeah. I think it, I think it is. I, I got to read Shimon's deal. He literally says Bart, huh? I still got to hear. Oh yeah, El Barto shaped like an alien. He's right. Uh, I was going to just mention something. We had uh, a commenter commented on our Kirkland eighteen. So the Kirkland is the it's a Costco independent bottling, uh, basically by Alexander and Murray an independent bottler and right. a commenter sent a link to an article about some of the Costco and the Alexander and Murray um, partnerships that they, that they formed in some of the bottlings that they've been doing. Now this one is the, uh, the space side. The article went in and talked about how uh, Kirkland or Costco is dealing with the Edrington group and also Diageo for a lot of their whiskeys. Mm. Um, and, and a lot of the comments really kind of come about, we had several comments as well, that it could just be, it could be from, it could be a McAllen whiskey, you know, a Glen Rotha, something like, it could be just from a tired cask, or basically it just didn't fit the flavor profile of what the bigger distillery looks for. So, you know, they, they sold it out to an independent modeler, basically. Right. I hear sometimes they've got great stuff. So, I don't know. You know what? Someone did tell me, though. I think someone saw the show when I was at this conference, and they said that uh, our Costco does have Kirkland stuff. Yeah, I think the liquor store. Well, do they not the whiskey, though, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. They said uh, it's a it's an independently owned shop that sits outside, but they, they said they had Kirkland. And Kirkland, they said, I, I could be wrong, they said it covered like bourbons that they'd independently bottled as well. Yeah, they've had blends. They've had uh, the space side. They've had Highlands. So, yeah, I had no. I was like, really? I was shout like, out to Swami right there. Five dollars from Swami. He says, yeah. "I need a tan on the school." You Cheers, know what? If we, were, if we were working that right, we would have said Scott will shave his head during the eleventh hour of the twelve hours of boom if we hit X amount of money. You wasted your hair. That's true. Yeah, we could have done that. Wow. I'm let's take a look at, speaking of the 12 hours of boom, let's start talking about that. Hey, that was a good segue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cato points out that the whiskey could be Highland Park also. I don't mm. think so. I'm not detect I don't detect any peat in it at all. Well, it says space side though. Uh, well, yeah, this one is a space side. That, that is true. So. All right. So. <laughs> You've already got some lineups done here. We had a couple people back out. We've had some rearranging going on. Well, and we're still waiting. We will probably have, well, the last spot, we've got two people vying for it. So we'll wait and see this week. But uh, do, 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 oh, this isn't my order here. Oh, uh, yeah. Hemphill just said Bart can shave his head. I just told you I got that alien misshape that Shimon pointed out. That is true. That could be the challenge right there, Barto. Hmm. My hair is still hanging in. <laughs> Yours has been in retreat. Mine's thin, and I am afraid that if I hit it, it ain't coming back. 
I'd okay, go- first up, so we start at 10. The first hour, it will be just us. Now, there could be some switching around here with the 12 hours of boom uh, if someone needs to switch up their time. Uh, starting off, the first hour will be us. Then we've got um, Daniel from the Whiskey Vault will be joining us at ele- from 11 to noon. Mm-hmm. At noon, we have the Cocktail Maven coming on. She's a big uh, cocktail person on Instagram, mixes cocktails. She's going to be arranging for us to get some stuff. We're going to be mixing up a whiskey cocktail. Now, we don't want to say what it is, but are you able to talk about her style that you mentioned to me? No, we don't. I I, I don't have any idea what it's going to be yet. Gotcha. But, but what I'm saying is you talked about how she's basically going to bundle it together in like a neat little mm-hmm. package, almost like a care package so that uh, we can assemble as we do the show. Oh, and uh, Lana is asking, that's yeah, coming up July 7th. So two weekends away. And we're going 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Central Time. Mm-hmm. Uh, CST. 1 o'clock p.m., Glenn Fittick, Tracy. Tracy Franklin will be joining us. 2 o'clock right now is our slot. We've got two vying for. That's our last slot. At 3 o'clock p.m., uh, Scotch Trooper. Brett mm-hmm. will be joining us, talk about what's going on in uh, his whiskey world. I'm sure he's been busy as always. Yep. 4 p.m., Davin de Kergamo, uh, Canadian Woo-hoo. Canadian author and joining us to talk about whiskey. Whoop. You're messing up Wi-Fi or I am one of the two. Uh, I've got two streaming Fortnite uh, or Intel. That might be you. You're all froze up and you're getting digitized. Hey, you were to me too. Well, the fans out there will be the ones to tell us who's on because you've locked up for me. That will give it a second here then. All right. Yeah, I'm, you're like in mid motion of grabbing a book. Uh, Donner Pass, Jason Coates has just tuned in. My Bourbon Journey, Creel. Uh, Donner Pass Whiskey has joined us from his cabin at the Lake of the Woods in Oregon. Ooh, Must have Coates. a good Wi Fi or good cell connection there. Yep. Coates says uh, he thinks it's the glare of your head that's causing a breakup. Yep. Uh, Moose says Scott is out. Bart is good. You're you're back. You're just a little fuzzy at this point in time. Bruce Willis was here. <laughs> um, am, I, am I back? Are we back? Do we got good connection? Did uh, did do last we talked about four o'clock? Davin de Kergamo is joining yep. us, author of uh, Canadian whiskey. Yep. I and just we'll, finished reading that. We'll talk about some Canadian whiskeys. Uh, five o'clock, uh, Janine from McCarthy's or Clear Creek Distillery will be joining us. Yes. Love Janine. She is very enthusiastic. Yep. She's great. Uh, six o'clock PM whiskey library DC will be joining us big on Instagram and organize a lot of tastings in the DC area. Nice. 7 o'clock p.m., My Bourbon Journey. Scott will be joining us, and he's in here watching and commenting tonight. All right. And we're going to round out the night at 8 o'clock p.m. with our last guest, Dr. Horovitz, will be joining us. He's got a podcast on YouTube, and we're going to be talking about some of the health effects of alcohol. Yep, that was your idea. That was a neat idea. And that's why we scheduled him for last, too. So, he, you know, if he told us at the first not to drink that much. Yeah. You know, it's too late. We already drank it. But right. that- yeah, we're still trying to metabolize one ounce an hour. That's our belief, at least. That's what we'll be talking about. And I think since I'm a little bigger than Scott, I could probably do one and a half ounces. So I could have a little more than Scott, is what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. I like that. But that won't end the show. That'll end our guests. Uh, we will have Cousin yeah. Shane will be in the house. We think we're going to have uh, uh, Shakes Pennington. will probably be on acoustic guitar again. And uh, we will, once again, it'll still be a little light probably, but we'll end out at the fire pit again. That's going to that's gonna be a continued theme. Um, where'd it go? Someone was just asking about it. Thomas Buck, what day are all these great guests? Attention is split with his paperwork. 
Uh, July 7th, it's two Saturdays away. It starts at 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Central. It's our second annual 12 Hours of Boom. Yes. Hopefully, I mean, last year it turned into a good kind of a, a fundraiser for us. We had some good super chats that came in. Yep. Uh, some, we picked up several Patreon supporters last year during the 12 yep. Hours of Boom. And that's how we're going to kind of use it. We're going to kind of do it as a... You know, it's a fun interview show. We kick back. I may or may not wear a lady's shirt or smock again. That's a possibility. But uh, we'll be doing a bunch of giveaways. And uh, we do have, uh, whenever we do a giveaway, there's there's a general one. And then there's one for our Super Scotch Gods, which are our Patreon backers. And, of course, uh, uh, you got great chance of winning just because you got the huge online folks in one category along with their Patreons, and then we do a separate one just for our Patreon supporters. So do a lot of giveaways. Well, and uh, Bill is commenting, Whiskey. Uh, Bill, you are you are on our short list, uh, yeah. first up on cancellations. So right. we, we'd reached out to Bill, and he was busy, couldn't join us, and then we had some invitations go out, and then now he's available. So you're up on our short list. Well, and we were even doubled up on, uh, we had a distillery that wanted to send one of their ambassadors in, but uh, having it on a Sunday sometimes does make that a little bit quirky. You know, I mean, that means it's it's not their work day, and we understand that. So, yeah, we get it. And uh, so sometimes, and, and they've got, those guys got, and gals, they've got families too, so we get sometimes they can't make our schedule. That's cool. So well, just, and also with the 12 hours of boom, we try to bring a mix and we don't have anybody returning from last year. And I mean, we've got, we got a lot of people we'd like to have on uh, a lot of other, you know, whiskey tubers out there we're buddies with, right. but we tried to bring a mix. You know, we've got a, an author, we've got a couple of distilleries, we've got an ambassador, mm -hmm. uh, you know, other whiskey tubers up and, you know, people, you know, Scott, my bourbon journey, we've been watching him for a little bit. Uh, uh, we, we were we, really, we worked in the uh, we worked in um, I'm, I'm blanking on her name, but it's going to teach us how to put together cocktail. So we're trying to definitely do some different stuff, right? Um, now I got distracted. I was thinking something else I was going to mention too about it. Sorry, I thought you yeah. saw Julia comment about making lemonade, and then you were done. You were oh yeah, she didn't. Yeah, her, well her. Uh, Julia Photography's in here. She's got her uh, YouTube page up. Right. And she just did a new one on uh, using tin cup and making a tin cup lemonade, basically. So that was a good, that was a good short little video. Mm. Nice high quality f video, f photo video incorporation. Um, oh, I was going to say Dan, Daniel, uh, Daniel Whittington from the Whiskey Vault is tuning in and we reached out to him because they actually reached out to us and a couple of other uh, YouTubers uh, and invited us down to their distillery opening in August. I think it's August 25th, a Saturday. Mm -hmm. So um, I know Aqua Vitae, Roy has put it out there that he's going and there's a couple uh, others that are invited, I don't know if they've released it yet or said that they're going, so I don't want to say who they are. Claire is just tuning in. He loves the bald look. Well, he missed it. He said he went bald on him. So. Oh, well, there, there you go. go. Whiskey, Dick. Whiskey Dick is one. Bill, he's been invited down to uh, Texas. I knew that. I didn't know if you'd put it out yet, Bill, so I didn't want to say anything. So he said he's going. Yeah, Santa Cruz and said they, uh, Claire missed the you shaving. He missed what? You shaved it. He made it sound like you shaved it live. Oh, no. It looks like it. The way you got the whiteness there, it does look like you just hit it live. Well, I was hoping to get some sun on it today, and man, it's been cloudy all day, so no sun today. <laughs> man, my little center bald spot. Reverse yarmulke keeps getting burned. I don't know what you're gonna do. Lana still likes me. Oh, you can it, uh, hair doesn't matter, brother. We're good. Well, we said uh, maybe with the twelve hours of boom, if we hit a certain amount of uh, super chats, that you'll shave yours. Nope, it won't come back. I'm not all zen on that. 
<laughs> I'd be more likely to grow a mustache than to shave off the hair. It's and and it, I've done this. I think 2011 or 2012 was the last time I shaved my head. So it's, I've done it a couple times before. It's just been a while, and uh, it's been hot. It's been humid, and I kind of been looking at all that silver coming in. I was like, maybe shaving it's just the way to go. All that silver. I kept <laughs> telling we we do our grumpy old dummies. We needed to do like. Uh, the dummies in the eighties or something and, and, and dye our hair back dark and, and give us like a little bit of a mullet. <laughs> I think we could go back, talk about like Knight Rider being on TV and Kit Knight Rider and Kit. Oh, I loved it. God, that was a good show. You fall guy. Oh, fall guy was good. Lee fall Majors. Guy. I don't remember that one. Oh yeah, Lee Majors just killed it. Remember he was oh, that's stuntman, right. stuntman that was also like a bounty hunter or something. Yeah. So what are you drinking, Mark? You haven't said. What am I drinking? It's the Ard Big Ten. Huh. Ard Big Ten. And I just uh when I drained that, I poured the uh to monotol. I never know how to say it. I just say Tom and Tool. Tom and Tool. I don't know if that's right or not. That's the yeah. Kansas. That's the Kansas pronunciation. Yeah, a peated tang is what it has. With a peated tang, it's a space side. We're gonna have that pretty soon. Thought about doing that with you in a uh, in a blind bottle, but I think I'll do a or a blind box. But I think I'll do another one with you. Mm mm mm. Well, let's hit on the uh, we never did do a recap. You want to just talk about the championship and make America beat it again since you're drinking hard bag 10? Mm, sure. I'm, I'm kind of it's 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 been a peated blackout for me. I can barely barely remember our finals. I'd have to look at it. I wasn't ready for a recap. Uh, you must have loved. Oh, Shazam. Shazam was pretty good. BJ and the Bear was all right. Mork and Mindy, I kind of missed Mork and Mindy. It was on CBS, and I was up in the mountains of Colorado, and we couldn't get it. Uh, Shimon says it's on the bottle or the tube there. How to pronounce Tom and Tool? <coughs> Woo! Swallowed that one wrong. Hmm. Mm. Oh yeah, Tom and Tool or to what to Owl? Huh? It's T apostrophe O W L. Tom in to Owl. Towel. Towel. Tom and Towel. Tall. And Tom, Tom and Tall. Tom and Tall. <laughs> we can just say that for the next ten minutes. <laughs> I was I was hoping let's go to make America beat it again championship. I was I was glad, surprised, but not surprised that I, the Ardbeg Dark Cove committee release made it for me. I was hoping it would. I had no idea going through there that that was the one that I was tasting, giving notes on, and sampling and picking. Right. I think I've got some of my notes here. There's Make America Pete it again. Oh, there we go. We're starting to get our feedback chirp going. Our feedback chirp. Oh, yeah. That happens once in a while. Yeah, if you don't say anything, it'll start feeding on itself. Oh, gotcha. Well, that's so, kind of odd. You're not saying something. Well, I was looking because uh, um, I knew I had the lag 12 was what it, And I love the lag 12. That did surprise me, actually, because... Um, you know, it didn't fare so well in the uh, very first show in the March Peak Madness. I like how the Octomore was your number two, but on my weird notes, what was your number one again? I don't I just have it says bottle A number 10 was Scott's number one. Hard bag, dark cove committee release. Okay. Because that was my number two. So. And then my three was the Lagavulin 12, 2017. Yeah, I do not have that listed on my list. So 
I just have our wild cards that got it in. So interesting. But uh, no, I love I love that lag twelve, and then it was real cool. I was in our one of our friendly uh, local liquor stores, and uh, boom! All of a sudden, there was another one on the shelf, and I'm like, "What is up with this?" And my uh, my my peep brother there said, "You know, I had that pulled for me, and I just wasn't going to buy it, so I put it back on the shelf." I go, "Well, take it back off, brother." So now I got three of them, so I'm happy. <laughs> Excuse me. Dummies. No, 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 no. Thanks, Scotch for Dummies. They're our stream boss now. I was their stream boss for, I super chatted and won the stream boss for one of their streams. Woo. Um, they were talking about worst whiskeys or something up above. I didn't catch all of it. Uh, a couple of them. Do, 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 do. I don't know. Did whiskey is whiskey Dick putting J Jack Daniels number seven in his bad whiskeys list? But then Hillbilly points out. He says if one of your top three worst whiskeys you've had is Jack Daniels number seven, you're living good. Oh yeah, I like Jack Daniels number seven. Yeah, yeah, he gets a bad rap. Somebody who said here, I need to oh, a Humphreys. I need to shave my head in support of your hair loss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and someone said, uh, oh, here it is. Loch Ness says, it must be I rubbed this Dalmore on my head, which I'm going to go to next. This Dalmore Portwood that we released last Saturday. Which I find delicious. We'll put Tom a tool in the background there. And then a little bit, I've been just really enjoying this Ben Romach, the peat smoke. So that, mm. one, that one I've been hitting, you're going to see this one's been, uh, this one's taking a bit of a hit. Yep. So that's kind of my, uh, if I'm sitting here editing video or something, I like to just pour a little dram of it. So it's been taking a bit of a beating. So. And uh, the Scotch for Dummies are commenting. They've, uh, I had been telling them for a while and a few of the other tubers to get their own uh, challenge coins like we do. And I mean, it's a big, big help with the show and um, the Scotch four dummies finally taken the plunge. They were afraid they were stepping on our toes and I'd been telling them, no guys do it. Get your own coins. Uh, our, our fans love these. Well, really started as a challenge coin, you know, it becomes a whiskey hat basically. And, and, serves as a dual purpose and helps you capture the nose on a whiskey, but yep. Scotch four dummies finally got around. They've ordered uh, their first set of coins. Very cool. Cause yeah, when you're in the uh, army or even military, whatever, it's quite common that uh, different units have their own coin. So, um, you know, and, and so collecting those coins is kind of a big deal. There's tons of them out there. The more the merrier really. Yeah. yeah, and like, go check out, uh, watch the Scotch Four Dummies, check their coins out and order one, and then uh, order one of ours as well to go with it. So you got matching sets, you know, works both ways. Yeah. <laughs> Pogs. <laughs> so, no, there was always... A little, little hate comment here from Duncan Harmsworth. He says he thought the Dalmore would just change my hair color to artificial. <laughs> yeah you should have come in looking like a ginger <laughs> that would have been good oh man I'd be like what happened to your hair well i was drinking this down more and somehow my hair color came back <laughs> don't don't hate the player <laughs> Well, let's, uh, I don't know what you're reaching for. Oh, there you go. You got a spill here. Oh, nope. All kinds of stuff. Rinse out the glass, dry it off, pour a little, little bit more of this down or a little bit of the Dalmore Portwood in there. All right. Now I will tell you, there were some guys that, uh, they weren't quite local to our area, although some of them weren't too far away. And as I was at this conference, um, some fans that, uh, that I didn't know that knew me from the show came up 
and I was pleased to surprise them with uh, a little more information on October 19th and 20th, our five-year anniversary whiskey gathering. Okay. So as you're pouring that, um, why don't we mention a few things about that as well? Okay. So that's uh, October 18th of 2013. We aired episode number one. Mm-hmm. So coming up on our fifth anniversary, we kind of said, what can we do? We've been talking about getting whiskey tubers together, getting fans together, doing this, doing that. Right. We had uh, we had illusions of grandeur in there, all the stuff that would happen, all the the sites that we'd visit and what we would do. Right. Then and we figured we're done. Done. it was overwhelming. Right. We're dummies. And we were also thinking you know what, um, the way we run the show, we just want to have a gathering, hang out. There's no black tie event. Matter of fact, we tied it in with uh, one real decent meal at a Scotch and Sirloin place. And then the other one is at a place called All Things Barbecue that uh, is really blowing up in Wichita. They have their own YouTube show, actually, um, do a lot of stuff with smokers and things. But uh, they have a chef and... Uh, We'll be doing um, a dinner event, and a uh, we won't say who yet because we haven't locked in who's going to do that tasting, but we're going to do an organized tasting at the dinner event at the Scotch and Sirloin on a Friday, and then the following day, Saturday, we're going to have more of an all-day leisurely fun. Live shows are going on. Um, we'll, we'll have some music there with uh, Shakes Pennington, uh, I believe, and, uh, and Cousin Shane will be there. But it, the design is going to be live. There'll be some live guests coming on, some remote guests coming on, and just having the chance to hang out. And the hotel we're looking at, um, I don't know if you want to put that out yet. They've got this beautiful front area that probably seats in a very relaxed style, like little circles. It almost feels like the circle pit in the backyard, but these are like couches and and little recliner chairs and stuff in this whole big open area. And I told them, hey, if we have whiskey folks here, you know, would they be able to sit down there and share their own drams? And they said, oh, yeah, you bet. They can't do it in the serving areas because of liquor laws, but that's not a serving area. It's more like a lounging area. And, uh, boy, I just picture hanging out with all the fans that show up, and uh, it, it looks awesome. We'll take some pictures of some of this stuff. And uh, we'll make further announcements as we lock in certain um, um, organized tastings that we're working on with the event. Well, yeah, that's what I was. Uh, I had these big plans in mind. I was kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of overwhelming. I don't know what to do. And, and we were told, hey, just start small, start simple, do a couple of things, and then let it grow from there. So like Bart said, Friday night. Uh, will be, we're actually, it'll be a pretty nice steak dinner and uh tasting that we're working on. Uh, Saturday, most of the day is a free hangout, but then Saturday evening we'll sell tickets again. They'll be cheaper than Friday nights, but uh, the place we're having it will provide dinner. We're going to have live music with cousin Shane and Shakes Pennington. At least they'll be out. Uh, maybe the rest of the band will work on that and see how much this venue can hold. Yeah, and we're worried a little bit about noise too, because it's going to be pretty tight. I think you are. I am. Yeah, I want. Well, I want. I'm really up for the mingling, and uh, that's why an acoustic guitar and Shane singing occasionally is awesome. Yeah. You add in electric guitar, bass, and drums, and you're you're talking about nothing else is going on. So. Well, and uh, someone had asked earlier, Cousin Shane and Shakes Pennington will also be uh, around all day on July 7th for the 12 Hours of Boom. Yeah. We're just going to have to watch their alcohol intake. Uh, Bart's watering down uh, <laughs> some whiskeys because Cousin Shane would be off the off the rails, basically. Sure. Well, and Shakes Pennington managed to locate my ECBP last time and, and just... He was about probably three quarters through. It was like, this is powerful. I'm like, God damn. Get, get back on the guitar, Shakes. Get back on the guitar. <laughs> Let me get some winter harvest rye for you. <laughs> yeah, back to uh, October, though. Again, the uh, the motel, the, the hotel that we're working with, we'll get a block of rooms there. 
it's about two blocks away from the Saturday event. So it's all walking distance. Maybe three or four. You got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Go and it's all, it's good. It's and good. Friday night we'll be driving distance, but we will arrange, we're going to do something for transportation. We'll get you from the hotel. If you come into town to the Scotch and Sirloin. So. Yep. Uh, October. 19th and 20th october 19th is friday october 20th is saturday yes so what we'll put out more information we'll do some video releases watch twitter watch instagram yep. our uh our uh, web page scotchtestdummies.com we're going to get a dedicated page up on there yep. we'll have uh, the tickets will be for sale on there as well as the hotel link to, to get your reservations in yep. picture it as a whiskey just a whiskey gathering no black tie. You're with the dummies. You might wear like a t-shirt with a bow tie. That'd be cool. You can now, do uh, Friday, Friday. Also, we will be at the motel early. We'll hang out at the motel for a little bit on Friday motel hotel. I don't know what the difference is. I say both interchangeable. <laughs> it's a hotel hotel. Uh, Friday. We will be there early. We'll hang out. We'll meet and greet people. Uh, and then move on to the ticketed uh, steak dinner and tasting Friday night. The same Saturday, we'll be back at the motel. We'll probably get like a small conference room there where we'll be set up. And then, like Bart says, the just the lobby of the motel is set up for a huge oh, gathering. Yeah, just just for like lounging. First of all, Sean Nemo's got it right on. He'll be wearing overalls with a bow tie. I think that could <laughs> almost be the theme. It's, we, we can call it a black tie event, and it, all it'll be is black ties and T-shirts. Well, and we don't know what to expect. We've right now we're blocking off twenty rooms. Uh, we don't know how how many people will be coming in. We can add to that. Yeah. So, yep. Now the blocker rooms we're getting the two they'll end. You'll have to have your reservations in by I think about a month ahead of time. September seventeenth or twentieth was the de was the uh, deadline for the blocker rooms reservation. Yep. And I, I think we'll uh, expand on that a little bit. We've got a couple, uh, well, not a couple. we got four that I know of, probably more, four whiskey clubs just in town that have expressed some interest. Yeah. Um, one of the clubs uh, has <clears throat> some uh, bagpipe players, and I got a card from one of them. So they may be at the, at the uh, not at the dinner, but at the uh, all more all afternoon and night event with some pipes. We are hoping now. Okay, another caveat right now is the Friday night event is capped at a hundred people. True. So if we That's have a hundred and fifteen people, a few people are going to be out of luck. Mm -hmm. If we have three hundred people that want to come, we might have to switch something up there. Yeah, we'll see because we don't. Uh, Saturday Saturday night's event will hold 150 to 200 somewhere yeah, in there. A lot more flexible there. Uh, hopefully this week we get we want to have it up and and everything kind of finalized by the 12 hours of boom July 7th. Hopefully this week we will have the website, the web page up and going and the tickets for sale. All right. And that was Jason Coates was asking on that. Well, and we we the uh, the room at the Scotch and Sirloin seats a hundred, but uh, we have to know we have to sell tickets so we know how much uh, food, what kind, you know, how they're going to plate the food. It'll be a twelve ounce uh, KC strip, uh, just one meat. That was a little surprising. We were trying to do like two or three, and they're like, no, 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 not with a hundred. So if we end up with less people, we might even have some more dinner options. That'll be a little easier. So like I said, we don't know where this is going to go. Yeah. Uh, if, if we have a hundred people that sign up, that's too, I mean, they have to do kind of, it's kind of a one dish just so the kitchen can be prepared for it and accommodate that many people. If right. only 30 or 40 people sign up, we can offer different dishes because it's a lot smaller group. So, right. or we're going to try. So we'll see. But if we got 100 in there, I mean, that would be great. We can't talk about who's going to do the tasting there yet because we haven't fully got that locked down. We're, we're in works. I'm excited for who's going to do the tasting there. And uh, we're not going to say exactly who's going to be at the Saturday event uh, as well, but it's going to be several different ambassadors. So 
um, or representatives, maybe I should say representatives. Uh, so there should be a good um, a mixture there as well. Yeah. Yep. So October 19th and 20th, clear your calendars and look at coming to Wichita, Kansas, right in the middle of the U.S. Go right. The location. You can drive here, baby. You can fly, too. Just got to make a connection. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, depending on where you're Chicago's direct flight in. True. Atlanta, I mean, Dallas. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot of the major airports are going to come right yeah, in. Those are direct in. Mm-hmm. But well, it depend, it depend on how this year goes will kind of dictate what happens. Yeah. You know, if we do it again next year. What, you know, what's the interest? How many people would we be looking at? And yep. we can kind of this year shouldn't cost us too much out of pocket. And we can kind of judge it from there and say, did we over plan? Did we under plan? What, mm -hmm. you know, what, what do we do next year? So. Well, we had our eyes on a room that could hold up to 450, but we thought one that might be presumptuous. And then I tried to get the room and they're like, uh, you guys are way late. That thing's booked all the way through February. And we're like, yeah. no. And they're like, yeah, yeah. They're like, we do weddings down there. We got this old town district. That's really cool. And the hotels are literally like a hundred yards away. It's all walking distance, a lot of nightlife. And uh, so our idea at first was down there, but it, we, so if this goes great, and, and we have a lot of interest, I'll probably be making a phone call and saying, hey, we want to lock down October. Right. <laughs> so um, we'll, we'll, get on the, uh, we'll get on the calendar quick there, uh, especially if we have a lot of interest. Well, and we, had, we do have some interest from some of the other whiskey tubers as well that said, uh, you know, they would check their calendars and kind of see where they were at and if they would be able to make it. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because we're going to be running live shows. So uh, this will be... You know, uh, fans might get called up and, and uh, be on camera if they want. They don't have to if they don't want. We're going to have some other YouTubers that will be joining us live. And then, obviously, fans can remote in. So even if you can't make it, you can. Uh, a couple shout-outs. Awaken, real quick. Marzipan, first of all. Uh, George Kaplan's got to go night-night. Says, cheers, everybody. Looking forward to October. Hopefully, George and uh, Amy can make it. That would be awesome. And Bobby Parnell says, perfect. He just checked Texas A&M's football schedule. That's their open week. So he's down for a road trip. Sweet. Awaken says, do it outside with fire pits and a nice farm chill setting. Probably not there. Just for ease of hotel reach and stuff, there is a little bit of an outdoor setting, however. So there may be components of that. But we also... October can swing from super nice to downright, not terrible, but chilly. So yeah. if, if we're lucky, we'd be looking at 60s, yeah. maybe 70s in the daytime, 30s, 40s at nighttime. 40, yeah. that's, if, that's if we're lucky. So. Yep. But the space we have has both interior and exterior. So. Yeah. And well, and well, Friday night is all indoors. Saturday night, there's open and indoor areas. They have fire pits and space heaters there as well. Yep. So, and, uh, and they're redoing their outside areas. So we're kind of, they want to make it look like it is some of these like outdoor fire pits and places. I don't know if they'll have that done right now. It's more of just an open patio area. That's fine too. So. But uh, we're probably going to do a collaboration with them at some point. They've uh, We've been in the works with them for, man, almost six months where we were working out with their – we were doing some stuff with their chef. So yep. they, got, they got busy. So Yep, yep. They got and busy. We, we get it. That's called Ooh. All Things Barbecue. So they're here in Wichita. They've got their own YouTube channel where they do uh, cooking shows, basically, and stuff with different smokers. And they're huge. Yeah. They're like 100,000 subs. So – uh, Sean Nemo points out, please get Roy here, Octavia Vitae. Roy was going to come. Roy was going to be here. We had him locked in. Can't make and, it. And then he got, well, he got invited to Texas along with us uh, to the Whiskey Vaults opening of their distillery. Right. And we both, we talked about, we both agreed that's a better trip for him to come across. For He had, he had some uh, conflicts with our dates as well that would have put him uh, in crunch time, basically, with his work schedule in October. So, 
Uh, Awaken came in late. He wants us to repeat real quick just on the event details. October 19th and 20th is our fifth anniversary. Our very first show went live October 18th of 2013. So we're in the works of planning a five-year anniversary birthday gathering, basically. It'll be October 19th and 20th. The 19th is Friday, where we are organizing a uh, steak dinner and official tasting that will happen Friday night here in Wichita. Uh, we there will be a uh, we'll hang out and stuff before that, yeah. And, and then Saturday the same. We'll do a free hangout, meet and greet stuff like that. Saturday night will be another uh, smaller ticketed event. We're going to have a meal catered basically. We'll have live music and some whiskey booths set up by some uh, different um, yeah. distilleries. Yeah. Aaron Gilbert says that uh, that uh, the temperatures we quote in October, smoking hot, shorts and t-shirts, suck it up, buttercups. <laughs> now, you're not wrong. I'm from Colorado, and I, I'm with you, but I want to let you know here, if it gets chilly and the wind's whipping, it's not nearly as comfortable due to the humidity outside as where I grew up in the mountains. So, well, and Julia is wanting to know when we're coming to Canada. We could, uh, who knows? I don't know. I'd love to get hey, up there. Is there a wedding or something going to happen up there? <laughs> Look at that. Uh, Durban, oh, Durban's Bourbon has been tuning in. If you guys don't check out Durban's Bourbon, they're on YouTube. Uh, two guys doing a hell of a job. They're, they haven't been at it near as long as we have, right around a year. Um, he's asking what kind of glass I'm drinking out of. This is the uh, Tuwa Irish whiskey glass. He wanted was, to know if your finger was okay. It was very, this glass destroyed Bart's fragile hands. It did. The underside of it has a real rough edge to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark Brown wants to know if there will be STD glasses included with the ticket. There will be some... Uh, um, we were looking at these giveaways. You'd call them um, enhancements, I guess, basically for buying tickets. Well, we were looking at. Uh, I think we could. Well, we shouldn't say we don't have them ordered yet. We got to do pricing. There would be some unique merch. There that you go. Only, only the attendees will get. Yes. So we're working on exactly what that will be, but it will be a one of a kind, unique merch that you will never be able to buy. You'll only get if you attend. And, and also because Awaken came in late, he's on uh, Marzipan, but uh, <laughs> we Marzipan. Were, we're, we're working with a hotel that's real close to the Saturday event. It's within walking distance uh, yeah. that should be finalized this week. Uh, hopefully this week we'll have a group of uh, rooms there. We'll have more details up. We'll have on our website and tickets will be for sale. So Yep. And we'll get some photos. I'm really jazzed about the, uh, the hotel. This, this like open front, I don't know, the front lobby is just, you can probably get 80 to 100 people lounging in this whole area on all these different chairs and couches. And I just picture hanging out, a huge hangout in there. It looks cool. If we get that, I'll be ecstatic. Well, what was funny was I was off the other day. And so I'd, uh, I went and uh, I called uh, the motel hotel. I talked to them, got some information. I went down to all things barbecue. And then the next day you're working, you go by the motel, the yeah. hotel. Sorry. I, keep I, saying was, yeah. hotel. I was on lunch. I was on lunch and I just stopped yeah. in and asked for a card. And, uh, and I just said, Hey, you know, I like this area where do you block rooms? And, and I, all I said was there was a YouTube show and they're like, we had a guy call us about a YouTube show. I was like, what? And it was Scott. So we were, we were on the same page. So Bobby Parnell wants to know if there will be board games. There will not be board games. Uh, if you're a board game fan and you like whiskey, I may have something quick and we may hide out in a corner and just keep Scott with a handle. We'll give him a handle 1.75 or something and he'll just not even see it. <laughs> we'll see there'll be there'll be some of my dual folks in there that like cardboard and whiskey well and this is just our first uh planned event like this we don't know what to expect we don't know how many people to expect 
we're planning small. We're planning simple. Mm -hmm. So no strippers. Yeah, definitely no strippers. No, this will be much more of like a, a, a almost like our show, but live. You'll be hanging out. You'll be able to to share a dram with folks. Everybody that's in here now would it would be phenomenal if they could all make it. And now you're hanging out together and just really further that community of uh, of of whiskey and friends. So. Fellowship. Sorry, I was trying to get Scott's old deal. Whiskey. What was it? Whiskey, fellowship, and friends or something? What was your deal? Whiskey talk and fellowship. Oh, that was it. WTF. Yep, that's it. See, a lot of looses. Yep, that's perfect, Bart. So, and that's the whole idea. We want to keep it casual. We want to keep it dummy style. Uh, that's why I'm joking around, but I'm actually thinking it might be kind of cool if we did have t-shirts and, and black bow ties that were going around because... You know, I see all these real fancy ones, and that's great. Uh, we want to go to some of those, too. Um, but I want this to be more about chillaxing, hanging out with a dram and, and enjoying each other's company as we do now, but in person. So that's my hope. That's my vision, I guess. I might. Uh, I don't want to speak for you, Scott. I don't know what you're thinking. I was re I, Actually, I was reading comments, and you were tuned out, and I don't even know what you said. Um, just You basically just say yes. Yes. <laughs> you can't uh, talk. You can't talk and ramble on like that and then just come in and go, Scott, what do you think? Because you know I'm reading comments. You know I'm not paying attention. I was reading the comments and talking at the same time. So I'm sorry you can't read and hear, but I can read and talk. <laughs> well, and Durbin's Bourbon is asking, Scott, do you prefer a favorite between the Weller 107 or the Special Reserve? Looks like you've been enjoying the Weller. That's what, at, at the beginning, we opened up with that. Uh, Bart and I have reviewed the 107. We've reviewed the Weller 12. We've reviewed the Van Winkle 12-year Lot B. We've never done the Special Reserve, which is Weller's entry-level bourbon. Here, it's in every store. And there's, there's some places in the States where it's scarce. It huh. only makes an appearance occasionally. Really? Yeah. So... I thought I need to get Weller Special Reserve and just try it. It's 18, 17, 18 dollars here. So yesterday I picked it up, and you can see the hit I put on this bottle last night, which is quite a bit for me. That is. So I was uh, pleasantly surprised by it. Uh, of course, I like weeded bourbons though too. Uh, ma I like Maker's Mark. Yeah. You no, know, I like the Weller. So the one hundred and seven is good too. What, what, what I want to do, though, is take 107 and bring it down to the same, bring it down to 45, 46% ABV and see how it does. We know at that higher ABV, you know, at the 53 and a half, that it does pack a little bit more punch. It packs a little bit more flavor. But I think Lana, Lana here says, uh, if y'all need any help, uh, hit, hit me up. I think that's right at us. So. But uh, yeah, this is, I think this is going to be a fun time. So we'll talk more about that as we get details. It's, it's, it's going to happen. It's a work in progress. It's going to be casual. Uh, it's not going to be overproduced. So. Um, well, and Bert, Bird Dog is tuning in and he said there should be name tags for one and all. We just talked about having lanyards and we'll yes. make that probably have name tags uh, for everybody that, that buys a ticket. If you're here and you buy a ticket, get name tag, get lanyard. Yep. So, yep. That way everybody's got everybody's, uh, you know, whatever they want to be called, basically. You know, you have people be like, bird dog. And then it'll be, and, 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 well, I don't know. What would, I don't know. Well, I actually do know bird dog's real name. So uh, S Sriracha Ace is asking, will there be live feeds from the events? Yeah. And that's part yeah. of it. We'll do more than one live stream from the event. We've talked about live streaming the tasting on Friday night as well from the steakhouse. We'll have to see. What we don't have. know their Wi-Fi. Yeah. All things barbecue because they do their live show with their chef. They have great Wi-Fi. And that was one reason we were even interested and attracted not only the location, but their Wi-Fi ability. Um, so we'll have to see what Scotch and Sirloin can do. But, uh, I would imagine they have Wi-Fi. I mean, they're 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 a good steakhouse. So, 
Uh, also, for those that are watching or are watching and you are going to buy tickets, we will need shirt sizes. We're just saying we'll have that in there instructions when you buy your tickets through our website to include in your com in the comments your shirt size. Yes. <laughs> What'd you see there? No, just you. You're like, oh. yes. Right. There will be special merchandise, but we need your shirt size. Right. That's all we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think uh, we're coming up. Well, we're fact is we started a little bit early, so we're probably at the hour mark. We've talked about the 12 hours of boom. We've talked about October, our fifth anniversary. We drew uh, the winner for the dragon glasses, which was now I don't remember. Oh, ooh, that looked painful. That's all right. Ryan Summers says he'll wear a suit to the event. That's fine, Ryan. You can come whatever way you want. Well, he called me in a little bit ago. He's in Oklahoma, so it's not that far of a drive for him. There you go. Uh, the winner of the glasses was James Humphreys. So I'll send James Humphreys a message. If you're watching later, uh, send us an email at Scotch Test Dummies or Scotch Test Dummies at gmail.com. Well, I've seen a few comments come up about manga shirts. They're uh you might see bart wearing a manga shirt at the event i don't know damn near guaranteed <laughs> you'll, you'll be able to get your photo with me in a manga that's what i'll be saying get your photo with me in a manga <laughs> <laughs> lana has said yeah lana's good with phone calls and emails so if we need anything to let her know cool cool I'm flying in from Tampa. Wow. Hey, Lana, I'm going to be out in Tampa in about two weeks. My sister lives out there. So, and you will be cold. My sister breaks out like winter parka jackets when it hits 57 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. She sent pictures before. It's cold here. I'm like, what's the temp? You got on like a snow suit. Oh, James Humphreys is tuning in now. He's here. So, James, send us a, an email. We actually... If you watch from the beginning, we I messed up the numbers. I did. And I we had Siri pick a number, and she said 38. And I went to my list, and I said, oh, that's Tim Dietrich. And then I showed the list, and everybody said, no, Tim Dietrich's 39. <laughs> I didn't even catch it. So I had to go back and look. It was 38. James Humphreys. Bingo. One of the Dragon Crescent tumblers. Yep, Lana says yes. We are having drinks, Bart. You bet. I will be there the uh, like the eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth. I think fifteenth, maybe. So we'll we'll figure something out. I'll have wife and kids with me and my sister. So, but uh, we'll be doing some board gaming. That's right. So older sister loves games too. Whoop whoop. We'll be at a beach. Uh, uh, sure, sure she does. She does. She digs it. You act like you don't like them, but I know you got some games. <laughs> <laughs> I got better stuff to do, like shine my head. There you go. Put on some, put on some, uh, some fake tan lotion. Send me your info. Uh, I think you got my email. I I believe I do. I think I do. If not. Bart at scotchtestdummies.com. Bart at scotchtestdummies.com. So, yeah. Oh, see you, Sean Hardesty. Hopefully, you're still here. 1055, he had to sign off. He plays uh, Clue. Look Sean at that. Hardesty is Hellcat Spirits. Wow. We gave, we gave him a shout out a while back on a live stream, or not a live stream, on a video. Jeez. And he, he does send in a picture of our. One of the first ones are coins, and he had uh, Motorhead. Oh, yeah. That's uh, right. Whiskey. I've got all kinds of photos coming in from Andrew in Vietnam and in Japan. He's all over Asia right now, too. I'll be showing – we'll be showing those on our Traveling Dummies. All you guys in here are, are, are great, super fans. Remember, if you go traveling, throw one of our coins in your pocket or wear your shirt. Get us a photo. We've got some great, great photos coming in. I still want one at the Brandenburg Gate. Oh, uh, one thing I was going to say earlier, the hotel that we're working with has a hot breakfast that's included. Ooh, and it's a pretty yeah. decent, they have a real nice restaurant. And actually, then they do uh, snacks and drinks in the evening. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, and uh, yeah, but we're going to be, I'm telling you, I, I can't wait to go pop in there and snap some photos of their front vestibule. I don't know what to call it. It's this huge, wide open space. My only fear is that you get 80 people in there, there'll be so much talking that it'll be pretty darn loud. Because it's like uh, granite floors or, or tiled floors, and but I mean it's it's set up as this big like lounging seating area. I mean it's just I, I'm actually as soon as I saw it, I'm like, man, I'm thrilled to just Friday. I can see people showing up, and you and I are in there hanging out, and there's some single malt coming around. And, yep. So. Uh, Whiskey Dick wants to know if we've had Uncle Nearest yet. No, we haven't. And actually, we were contacted by them. We got a message from them a while back, and I, I sent them a message back, but then never heard back from them. They got busy. Uh, Durbin's Bourbon says he's a fellow head shaver. You get used to it. At least, yeah. At least I have a nice round dome. Yeah. I've, had it. I've shaved my head before. It's just been a while. It's been a few years. So, and really, one of the reasons I haven't for quite a while. This takes a lot of work. <laughs> It does. It's actually more work than just having hair. Right, because you got to shave it every day. Yep. Yeah. Shave, prep it, shave it, and then condition it afterwards. Really? Otherwise, you get all flaky? Well, it depends probably on the person, but <laughs> well, yeah, take some, just take some lotion. It's got some lotion on it right now. It makes it shiny. Oh, that's good. That's a good tip right there. That's a good story. But yeah, if you get, let it go a day and that stubble's growing, even take it when you take off your shirt, it just sticks to it and you're like ripping it off. Wow. Tell me more. Oh, Whiskey Dick only shaves his twice a week. I, he must not have much hair left at all. If that's all. <laughs> I, I got to shave mine every day. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> How many people can you fit in the jacuzzi room? Wow. Uh, how many people can you fit in a jacuzzi room, Sirachi? I don't know. I don't know. So, but, oh, my. Yeah, this uh, hotel we're looking at is actually just, uh, what, it got remodeled about five years ago, and it's it's one of the older uh, hotels that are in the Wichita area. Mm -hmm. It harkens back to the 1900s. I think somebody uh, was in something, didn't they say, like, Marilyn Monroe stayed there? Maybe, uh, oh, shoot, they said some, somebody else, I thought, a couple other famous people stayed there when they came through town. Can't remember. So, not that that matters. They, they like, knocked out wall. I hadn't been in there in a while. So, when I went in, I was like, holy moly, they, they everything's modernized. So... I was kind of curious too. They've got a back little patio. I don't know if we would be able to use that as well. That that overlooks the river, which would be really nice. So, you mind if I say the hotel? No, that's what I think we're okay to say it for now. So we haven't posted it on the website yet, but it's the Drury. I don't know if they're calling it the Drury Hotel or Inn. I can't. Yeah, it's called the Drury downtown plaza or something yeah. like that but it's an it's a it's a very old hotel that's been refurbished it's very nice yeah yeah d-r-u-r-y so and it sits right off of douglas which is the, like the main downtown strip right along the river um and they really really did a nice job with it yeah we can do uh ryan summers points out we can do the haunted ghost chasing drunk with scott and bart at the hotel I would say that uh, a lot of people, there's some uh, older buildings in the downtown area, the old library, the old uh, courthouse, stuff like that. People go ghost hunting in. Really? I say all they need to do is go ghost hunting down by the river that runs through downtown because there's like 40 people a year that die in the river. <laughs> you know, what are you? They're always pulling, they're always pulling bodies out of the river. There's all oh. kinds of ghosts walking around down there. Well, that sounds like a fun place to come visit. <laughs> There's not 40 bodies coming out of the river. <laughs> but I, I see your point, though. If you're going to talk about like where people die, they don't die in the library. Yeah. <laughs> Back in 1922, a guy was over there reading Huck Finn and, and he was murdered, and now he haunts the, the Huck Finn section. Shut up. 
<laughs> See, now Ryan wants to come look for bodies. So, yeah, it's a win-win. You know, I was out um... – Oh, man. We're, well, we could see from the Hyatt, which isn't far away from the Drury, that they're doing all these, uh, all this like paddle boarding and kayaking and all this stuff. Did you hear they're trying to make that the, the whole river is supposed to try to go federal so they can get a bunch of money and change and like add a bunch of cool stuff? Oh, no, I did not see that. Yeah, they had this huge event down there, though. It looked cool. They were doing paddle boarding, they were doing all kinds of stuff. My sister does that all around Tampa. I don't know what you call it. Where you stand on it, you kind of just paddle around. Yeah, I see you, Bill. Whiskey Dick, he's got to go. I think it's about time for us, too. We've lost more than half of our viewers. Yep, yep, but. we'll let him go. Well, I, it might have been the 40 bodies that you find outside the hotel. Yeah, but even Daniel Brown, he points out, I could be a, a – I could I want a job doing tourism promotion. <laughs> yeah, got it. Sounds good to me. To Long, I that it's called paddle boarding. It's called paddle boarding. Yep. Good. There you go. Lana, no, my sister does that all the time. And Ryan, Bart has something that you blow up, but it's not a raft. Oh, Lordy. Boy, have you had, you've had too much of the Wellers. <laughs> you I'm, on, I'm still on the Downmore port. I don't know. You shaved your head, hit, you were drinking right from the neck of the bottle. <laughs> All right, Lana, thanks. Yeah, send me an email tomorrow to Bart at Scotch Test Dummies. And uh yeah, we'll 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 link up and we'll have a we'll have a dram for sure. Awesome. All right. You know what? I never said test it, but I'll say scotch it, you scotch gods. Well, we never really named a bottle or anything that we were taking a look at or testing, so uh and I'm out of whiskey. Thanks to everybody that tuned in. I know only half of you are still here. We'll oh, see you uh, July 7th for the 12 Hours of Boom, 10 a.m., 10 p.m., and we'll see you. If we don't see you then, we'll see you in October. Woo! T-shirts and bow ties. Salancha, <laughs> dummies. Salancha. Scotch and Scotch, God. See you guys. Later. <laughs>